The following is a Fox 43 special presentation. What you are about to see is an in-depth look at paranormal activity in South Central Pennsylvania. The people are real, the places are real, and the stories are from the heart. This is the Pennsylvania Ghost Project. Tonight. Something is definitely there, something is out there. Do the spirits of an Indian massacre still remain in the Fulton Opera House? We bring along ghost hunters to show you the evidence. Does a female ghost still entertain guests at Alfred's Victorian restaurant? Meet Emma. Ain't no such thing as ghosts. Work here for a while. You believe it. Is a popular Halloween attraction actually haunted all year long? We bring along the psychics. I seen the hanging of two men. Does the spirit of an Indian still protect the people living on his land and in this house? And that's why they do crazy things sometimes to let you know that it's their house, they're here, and you're not one. It's known as the legend of the Hex murder case. It received worldwide attention. Tonight, the family members speak out for the first time. I don't really believe they meant to murder him. They went to rob him. And we take our cameras to the most haunted place in America, Gettysburg. Are there spirits among us? You decide. This is the Pennsylvania Ghost Project. And now, Susan Schreck and Don Schaller. Central Pennsylvania has a rich history in folklore and in legend. Tonight, in the Pennsylvania Ghost Project, we'll bring you stories of ghosts and spirits from our area and places you thought you knew. These are just a few of the many tales of the supernatural. Some you've probably heard before. Others will surprise you. Let's start in Middletown at one of Dauphin County's finest restaurants where they have a most gracious host named Emma. Chances are you've never seen her, but you may have felt her presence. A friendly presence, a, a nice presence. I would not in any way, shape, or form call it a ugly presence. When I first came here to work in 1973, they said this place is haunted with ghosts. I said, yeah, right. There ain't no such thing as ghosts. She changed my mind. She is affectionately called Emma. Emma lived here in the early 1900s. She does mischievous things, such as set off the alarms uh, that call the police station. Uh, in the middle of the afternoon, you'll hear the radio go through all the stations, like somebody took the knob and just flicked it right through all the channels. I can tell you a few things about working in the kitchen where we have our pots and pans hanging up on hooks. You'd be down there and a spoon would fall or a sauce pot would fall, and they're hanging up on the hooks. And you just say, hey, Emma, I'm busy. I don't have time for this. Go upstairs. Leave me alone. They quit falling. Things like that, uh, back door opening up, you close it, it would open, close it, put the dead bolt on it, still open. And just tell her, go upstairs, leave me alone, I don't have time. Members of the Capital Ghost Forum investigate haunted places. They've been to Alfred's Victorian several times. This area, right here and out in the steps, is really strong. It's every time I've been in here, this presence has been all around in this area. Emma never disappoints, but occasionally surprises. I know one lady that went to use the restroom and a bowl of potpourri went flying off the top of the toilet tank into the door. <laughs> Needless to say, the woman came out with her pantyhose down around her ankles and was very scared. Emma's story has been a source of folklore and gossip for many years. The first story was that Emma's boyfriend went off to World War I, was killed, and out of grief, she threw herself into the furnace downstairs. The little old lady sitting across from her said, no, 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 she didn't do it out of grief. Her sister was jealous and threw her into the furnace downstairs. So the story comes down to, either way, Emma died in the furnace downstairs. For I don't know how long, uh, they had a problem with everything electrical. The MasterCard and Visa machine would not work. The telephones weren't ringing. Uh, you know, or they'd pick them up and nobody would be there. So 
she's here. What a better place to live for a ghost. No one lives here. We just entertain here. She entertains all the time. To let her presence know that she's here. She's letting you know she's here. I believe she's here. Ain't no doubt in my mind about it. Sickman's Mill is known as one of those attractions where people flock to be scared. However, many believe that the spirits that live in this mill year-round are actually scarier than anything that could ever be staged. What you are about to see is not part of this attraction. Tonight, we bring with us psychic Carol Kirkpatrick, who believes that each of us are multi-dimensional beings, and she claims to be able to communicate with those dimensions of this time and the past. She has never been to this mill, nor has she met the owners who have heard real stories of hauntings in this mill. I feel as though that there's a lot of activity as we move up because it, it feels as though at the higher point and towards the water, we're going to feel a lot more association activities of uh, what's gone on. Uh, I have seen a fire and I wondered, did the mill burn? There was a mill built in 1793 that was a distillery. It was a wooden building and it burned down in the 1800s. Across the water, I felt a very large ground of Indians. And the place across the, the creek, right across the bridge, was an Indian trading post in the 17, 1700s. I felt as though um, a period of upset, turmoil, uh, a feeling of heavy emotional activities. I seen the hanging of two men. There was a miller murdered here and that the local people found or caught the murderer and hung him. As I moved towards the back of this uh, fourth floor, it is the most um, intense energy a very strong focus of energy communication, dimensions of energy spiraling upward. It's a very positive force, but it also can be a, a very high-pitched energy that not everybody can deal with it. It's called uh, a light force of energy or a vortex. Two years ago, we had a group here called Ghost Hunters of America, and they set up electronic equipment up here on the fourth floor, and they have a picture of a, a vortex. I feel as though that there are a lot of activities in and out of this space. A vortex is also a place where people who have passed to the other side can go into the light and go on into heaven. What do you think? The mill's owners were amazed at Carol's accuracy and ability and so were we. Intrigue? Next, we will explore one of your county's most famous legends, the spirits of Raymeyer's Hollow. And we'll see who's still living in Lancaster's Fulton Opera House. In 1928, three men in southern York County went on a witch hunt, one of them intending to remove a hex he claimed was responsible for 15 years of bad luck. The so-called witch, Nelson Raymeyer, wound up dead, while the legend of Raymeyer's Hollow has survived for more than 70 years. And I know they, they murdered him, and they set his body on fire. And supposedly when they went out of the house, uh, John Curry, the youngest of, of the three that went down there that night, supposedly as he left the house saw his uh, spirit rising from the smoke um, and going up into the air laughing and, you know, and carrying on as it went. That's, that's you know, the, the, the legend, I guess, of what happened down there. Does Nelson Raymeyer's soul still haunt the hollow? Oh, you'd hear all sorts of stories, like you couldn't drive past the house, the car would shut off or the lights would go out. It's rumored Raymeyer is avenging his brutal death, killed because he was a witch and had hexed another man. The news spread around the world. People overseas were just amazed that, that uh, York Countyans could be so backwards in their, in their thinking of, of powwowing and, you know, white witchcraft or black witchcraft. 
Hexing was very popular here. I can remember being powwow for as a child. I was a very thin, sickly looking child. And the neighbor, she measured me with a string and then she tied it together. And I would stand up on her kitchen table and step into this ring and she would take it up over my body. And as she did, she would say certain words. But Ray Meyer's relatives swear that Nelson wasn't a witch, that his attackers made up the story to cover their crime. It was never done because of hexing. He wasn't into that sort of thing. He wasn't that kind of a man. I don't really believe they meant to murder him. They went to rob him. The legend's been tough on the family. They've lived with cruel taunts and painful memories. They found him on Thanksgiving Day, and Friday I saw the body, and we walked across the hill, and we went in and saw the place where the, the floor, where the hole was burned in. The they would like Nelson remembered in a different way. To remember that Nelson was a nice human being and that he was well-read and that he had a family that cared for him and, and friends. But curiosity is slow to die. It was an actual murder, actual location, actual history, and um, just come October, people just have got to go down there. It is considered one of the most haunted places in Lancaster County. The Fulton Opera House is a site for theater and for music, but it was once also the site of a bloody massacre. Every old theater worth its salt has to have a ghost. In fact, every theater has a ghost light. You turn them on at night when the theater's dark and everybody's gone. Finding their way in the dark tonight are the Pennsylvania ghost hunters. Usually the places we go have a story attached to it and we basically confirm the story of something paranormal is occurring or the photographs reveal that. The place is full of stories and sightings. A figure that was always seen in white. A woman in the garb she wore looked in the late 1800s. And a lot of people who worked on the stage often said they had seen this person. Ghost hunter Rick Fisher uses equipment to determine spirit activity, items like thermal scanners. So what we'll do is scan the area around here and look for a drop in temperature or an increase in temperature. You have to take into consideration like air conditioning vents, heating vents, things like that. Some employees have quit rather than work in the upper balconies. They would feel presences, um, cold, they'd hear footsteps, doors would swing open, things of that nature. One story tells about um, a technician who was working up there and heard the door open, felt somebody come sit near her and didn't think much of it. Of course, you have other people helping out on the show. And when the show was over, this figure said to her, that's my granddaughter down there on the stage. The tech later told the actress. And said, guess what, I just saw your grandfather. He was sitting watching the show with me. And the little girl said, my grandfather's dead. Fisher also uses electromagnetic field detectors and motion detectors. You can see it emits an infrared beam, something crossed that for that to go off. Yet nothing was, nothing was visible over there that moved. But perhaps most compelling is the basement. In the 1700s, this was a prison that held Indians. And a group of vigilante men, the Pexting boys, by some accounts, Paxton by others, broke into the prison on a Sunday, on December 27th, when the sheriff and guard uh, were out to church, rounded up the Indians, and brutally massacred them on the spot. The ghost hunters set up cameras and digital voice recorders here an hour ago. Uh, sat it down, hit record, asked if anyone would like to communicate with me, and just we exited this room and no one was in here. Almost like the spirits are screaming, you know, I'm here, you know, can't you see me or something like that. With this, as you're recording, you can just stand here and watch it. You can actually see them. The most common anomaly you will film is the orb, the ball of light. You get some people who say, if we're doing the work of the devil, I'm just photographing strange things. That doesn't make me evil. I believe life continues in another form. And, uh, Using the equipment we use, we're documenting this. Uh, photographs don't lie. Is the science of ghost hunting more believable than psychic interpretation? If nothing else, it is every bit as intriguing.
Next, we'll hear more about the ancient Indians and if they're still occupying land near the Susquehanna River. And we'll explore some of those famous ghosts of Gettysburg. The ancient Indians once populated this area. They lived and loved and fought and died on this land. Some would say they're still here, still fighting to claim the land they still consider theirs. I just, I felt like I had enough. I want to be happy in my house. I didn't want anything, nothing. No new spirits, whether it was alive, dead, or whatever. We've had windows slamming shut that don't slam shut, that stay up by themselves. We've had doors opening by themselves and being unlocked. Shauna moved in just a few weeks ago. When a friend of mine had um, started painting the room, this one spot just kept reappearing. After two coats of primer and four coats of paint, this spot just kept coming right back through. She always felt something watching. So just get the heck out of my house now. I said, just get out of here because you're not going to live here. The next morning, the door was splintered on the inside as if something was breaking out. And that's when I decided to call Kelly. And I wanted somebody to come and bless my house and make it safe. Kelly Weaver is a psychic investigator. I'd say in this area right in here and over towards this door, I felt a lot of heaviness. It was a white settler named Solomon who was beheaded and tortured by the Indians. Kelly told me this and my heart just stopped. I'm like, oh my God. And I, I come in picturing that this man, I'm going to see this person. His slow, painful death has kept him trapped here on this land. Kelly released Solomon from this world into the spirit world. I just ask for help from the spiritual realm. Uh, I hold my hands up and it almost feels like the spirit walks right into me. I hold my hands up like that and I feel a coldness start at the bottom of my feet and go all the way up through my body and out through my hands. Solomon left, but others remain. Shauna's young children see them. They and um, a friend of theirs have ran inside after playing out at the side of the house and they said, the Indians are here, the Indians are here. And I said, what? I said, who's this? I goes, Jujuba. And I knew, of course, who it was, but I had not mentioned it around my kids at all. And um, I said, who's Jujuba? The man that used to live here. The way that he appeared to me is there is a dark hair going back like a mohawk, but yet he has some, it's a little bit long hair. There's feathers coming out of his head. Um, he does have the, the little bit of black paint going here, like three different things. But this Indian said, no, this is his home, and he is not going, and he said, uh, there's many, many of us here. And he said, you know, you, you could never get rid of us. So Shauna keeps a memorial to the Indians to foster peace. Jujuba now acts as a guardian. No one else had even taken the time to find out that he was here. Although he did many things to get people's attention, nobody, nobody really cared. And she went as far as to do that, so he feels that he owes her. And he does want to protect her. Gettysburg is filled with stories of ghosts and hauntings. During the Civil War, this small town was overwhelmed with suffering and death, this house included, where a young woman was killed, and the pain still lingers here today. The Jenny Wade house is kind of a, kind of a sad house because it, it was the site of the death of the uh, only civilian killed in the three-day Holocaust that was Gettysburg. The museum still carries the wounds of gunfire. Jenny Wade was kneading bread dough on this table in the kitchen. And the bullet actually was a stray bullet. It went through two doors to hit her in the back and kill her. She was just 20 years old. And Jenny's body was placed in this cellar then and remained here until the battle on July 3rd died down. And it is here where much of the spirit energies reside, among the mannequins that depict the story. The spirit's not real happy as to so many people. Uh, coming on to them. I felt them crowd in under the bed area and to the back corner that was most dim. While these forms stay silent, the spirits scream to be heard. I particularly heard the name of a James. James, I believe, was the name of Jenny Wade's father. He was not in the house when his beloved daughter died. Several years before, uh, he was incarcerated. Um, for larceny and then later the rumors went around that he had gone insane. Rumors that will not let him rest. He just wants more knowledge, more truth, 
uh, more activity to be brought forth and to be broadcasted that yes, he did drink and yes, he was cynical, but that uh, he had some visionary concepts and some visions and people related that he was just crazy. And in fact, he says he was not. Unseen hands jangle the display chain. Other strange experiences also include cameras going on the blink or not taking pictures. Or showing ghosts. Is this Jenny's spirit? Interestingly enough, her ghost has never been experienced, felt, seen in this, in this house. Perhaps with her instant death, her pain was less than those who mourn her. When she was shot, she just kind of went through the roof, the, her energy. I feel as though that she went on. While Jenny's spirit has gone on, our psychics believe there are many souls that are still trapped. Still to come. We'll explore to see why Gettysburg is known as the most haunted place in America. And we combine the energy of all of our psychic investigators to see who's guarding the Saks Bridge. Gettysburg has some of the strongest spirit activity in the United States. Much of it emanates from the bloody battles of the Civil War. One place that seems to hold tremendous emotion is here at the Saks Bridge. We brought all of our investigators together and combined the science and equipment with that of psychic interpretation. Here's what happened. It's like I'm continuously pulled to the other end. It's like there's a greater strength, a greater feeling, a greater emotion yet to be felt. Right in this area of the bridge, more so to the left. There's, there's a, um, to me, just a change of energy. It feels colder. I felt a little girl going into the water. I felt as though that there was the sadness of drowning in that region. Now, the closer I get to the end here, the more I feel like there is a wall just just keeping me back. And, and I'm hearing voices in my head just saying, don't, don't come over. You have to have the infrared capability on it. That seems to, to actually work much better for situations like this because you can film in the complete dark. This part of the bridge is extremely sad. Looking over into the woods, there are so many men crouched down in the woods. I, I feel them sweating and shaking. Both armies used this bridge to cross uh, Marsh Creek. It's just like when I get to about right here, it's like I feel like um, Oh, I can't get enough air, I can't breathe in enough. This area uh, near the bridge was uh, a Confederate encampment. It was a hospital site and it was a, um, a burial site. I'm getting the name of Peter, Peter Adams. I'm seeing that he has a, a long, one of those long, long mustaches, scruffy, he's very dirty, he's thirsty. Mm. I want to fall over. <laughs> I can't hold my balance here. He, he's, he's almost crying just saying, help me. He is being asked to send home, to be sent home. There is a force that is, is like trying to, to suck, suck my life or energy and create an imbalance. He's gone. You can take uh, what seem to be spirit energy orbs, is what they call them. They seem to be like circular or, or globes of energy. A spirit is the energy that's left over when you die. Um, everybody has a spirit. If it is a haunted spirit, it's still trying to transmit uh, on the earth plane or work out an unfinished business. We've taken these, these photos, the original photos, to um, uh, photography experts. They look at the negatives. Uh, they realize it's not in the developing. It's not a water spot. But it's all energy. 
because when we die, the energy keeps on living. And it's their choice that they're always welcome and always follow the brightest light. It will take them uh, to the highest energy in heaven. We're trying to disprove this all the time, and we, and, and we can't. Tonight, we've brought you first-hand accounts of paranormal activity from throughout central Pennsylvania. Is it proof that ghosts and spirits actually exist? You decide. We hope you've enjoyed watching the Pennsylvania Ghost Project as much as we've enjoyed producing it. Good night.